All right, folks, back to our Gold Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, many of us, us try to take our health seriously in 2019. Folks want to get healthy, folks want to get well, folks want to feel a lot better uh, and lose some weight. Well, one of the ways to do that is uh, working with one of our partners, the folks at D Herbs. Uh, yesterday, of course, we talked to uh, the CEO, Dr. A.D. Dolphin. The D Herb uh, body, Full Body Cleanse uh, is a great way for you to feel better. Uh, and, of course, look, many of us, how we eat, how we abuse our bodies, we ate all kinds of stuff during the holidays, processed foods, fried foods, you name it. And so what this cleanse does is just clean out the toxic buildup in your system. I've been doing it uh, for, this is like day 12. And so, uh, yeah, I still want a good piece of chicken or some steak, but I can't. <laughs> but between the raw vegetables and between the uh, cleanses, that's exactly uh, what it does. And so uh, what we can all do, the D Herbs Cleanse together. You can go to <laughs> dherbs.com, dherbs.com, use the promo code Roland uh, for a discount at checkout. That's the letter dherbs.com or you can call 866-4-D-HERBS 866-4-D-HERBS that's 866-4-D-HERBS and use the promo code Roland. Now back to your Roland Martin unfiltered video. <laughs> Yesterday y'all that was an amazing exchange at the confirmation hearings of William Barr for Attorney General. Now here's what happens every time when you have these confirmation hearings and so he was there for one uh, whole day and then they have folks who come there who can speak for or against him. So there, there were a number of folks in the civil rights community uh, who spoke uh, on yesterday. Uh, now, uh, what was very interesting that, that you know, look, you, you, mainstream media is not going to cover it. And so what happened was I was online because uh, yesterday, of course, I was in North Carolina speaking at North Carolina Central University. Uh, and I saw this video right before I went to speak and I said, oh, yo, we have got to do this on the show tomorrow. Uh, and what was very interesting was that Senator Lindsey Graham, he, he was just perplexed. He just could not understand uh, why Republicans uh, don't get high grades from the NAACP. I mean, this was this this long exchange. Uh, and so in the um, in the vein of Kanye uh, and others, uh, we shall right now uh, deconstruct, if you will, and offer uh, a teachable moment to Senator Lindsey Graham. Uh, and so let's go ahead and press play. So, Mr. Johnson, thank you for coming today. Uh, I, I listened uh, to your concerns about Mr. Barr. Um, I voted for Holder and Lynch. Um, do you think I made a good decision voting for them to be attorney general? I do. Why? I think their presentation before this committee was honest, direct, but more importantly, they committed to protect our democracy. Uh, for African Americans, protected democracy is to also regularly enforce uh, efforts to ensure that all citizens can uh, cast their ballot. Right. Uh, they committed to that, and they demonstrated that while they were in office. Okay, and you believe Mr. Uh, Barr will not be committed to that? Well, I, have, I have serious reservations and concern. Okay. Uh, those concerns uh, sir, first start with this administration, their lack of enforcing Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. How much of it is about this administration versus Mr. Barr? In, in many ways, it's difficult to separate the two. So I just want Okay. <laughs> Did y'all not hear the part where Derek Johnson said it's really about the administration, and then Lindsey Graham comes back and says, well... I, what? I just think this is about the administration. Okay, Lindsay, um, the Attorney General of the United States is part of the administration. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when you are assessing whether or not somebody should be confirmed, you're not there to talk about how great that individual is. You're there because it's a part of the administration. Press play. I want to suggest something to you. <clears throat> There's a lot of concerns I had about the Obama administration. I will not bore you with my concerns. But I thought he chose wisely <clears throat> with Mr. Holder and Ms. Lynch because they have differences on policy than I, because I'm a Republican. But I thought they would be good stewards of the law and they would be fair arbiters of the being attorney general. It never crossed my mind that I would vote against them because I have policy disagreements. If that's going to be the new standard, none of us are going to vote for anybody on the other side. So, Okay, the whole point of opposing 
somebody is that when you go before the Senate, it's because of policy. It's not a fun thing. It's not we're in the park. We're not in the sandbox. It's not, hey, can we be buddy? Please check yes or no. That's kind of how this thing goes, Lindsey Graham. So I'm trying to understand how, why is he so confused uh, over the issue? And okay, you voted for uh, Eric Holder and as well as um, uh, Loretta Lynch. That has nothing to do with the discussion today. Press play. Thank you for your input. But if I may, Mr. Chair? Please. Going beyond policy disagreement, uh, this nation have had a long history of discriminatory practices, particularly in the criminal justice system. And any time we have a nominee to come before this committee who truly don't appreciate the, dis the disparities in the criminal justice system, as he stated yesterday, that goes beyond can, policy can disagreement. Just, that goes towards could, whether or not we understand that equal protection of the law should be afforded well, to I all citizens. I want to make sure you understand what he said, because I remember Senator Booker asking him, and he says yes. The crack cocaine sentences were disproportionate to the African-American individual, and that's why we changed the disparity between powder cocaine and crack cocaine. He acknowledged that, but in 1992, he thought the biggest victim of rampant uh, violent crime uh, were, you know, low-income, mostly minority communities. So I don't buy what you're saying about him not understanding their differences and how one group is affected particularly in the drug arena. So I think what he was trying to do is talk about crime. But here's what's perplexing to me. Stop. Okay. He cherry picked there because he also said, Barr, he said that he did not believe that the legal system treated black folks differently than white folks. That's actually what Derek Johnson was talking about. But you notice how Lindsey Graham tried to only go to the crack, uh, crack uh, cocaine and the powder cocaine disparity. Just want to let y'all know that fact. Press play. ACP has been in the fight <clears throat> for social and racial justice for a very long time. And I don't know how we got here, but you do a scorecard every year. And in 2017, every Democrat got 100 percent. I got 22 percent. Grassley got 11. Cornyn got 11. Lee got 11. Cruz got 11. Sass got six. Ernst got 11, Kennedy got 17, Tillis got 11, and Crapo got 6. Lindsey Graham said, y'all, I don't know how we got here. Here we go to my iPad. This is the NAACP. No, go to my iPad. Go to my iPad. This is the NAACP's report card. This is what it says. Since 1914, the NAACP legislative report card has served as a presentation of key civil rights votes taken in the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives. The edition that follows contains votes taken during the first session of the 115th Congress, which began January 3rd, 2017 and ended on December 22nd, 2017. The second half of the 115th Congress began on January 2nd, 2018. This report card is designed to provide NAACP members with insight into the general voting patterns of their congressional representatives and state delegations over the course of the first session of the 115th Congress. How did we get here? We've been here, Lindsay, for 104 years. Press play. There's a disparity here. I hope you think that I'm, because I disagree with your scorecard rating, that I'm not a racist. And I certainly don't know how to close this gap. So I, I'd I, like to. Right. So the NAACP, we're a nonpartisan organization. Our scorecard is well, not for, based on political parties. Well, our scorecard is based on our agenda. Well, how do you and explain our agenda, the differences? If you allow me. Our agenda is set by the delegates from across the country. And we're very clear that discrimination should not be a part of the agenda. How many of them are Republicans? Excuse me? How many of them are Republicans? I don't, we don't determine how many members are Republicans. We have a, a Republicans among our membership on our national board. I, I don't want to... But if well, you allow me to explain please, the, the report card, 
right? And so we establish our agenda not based on political parties because we understand that political parties are nothing more than vehicles for agendas. And as many African Americans were members of the Republican parties before the 1965 Voting Rights Act, many African Americans may decide their agenda based on the party's platform. And if party platforms align with the needs and interests of our communities, then they would vote for a platform that support their needs, whether it's access to quality public education, ensuring that all Af African Americans and Americans can cast a fair ballot, fair housing policies, making sure we have true tests to determine desperate impact. Those are the issues we are concerned about. Those are not partisan issues. Those are policy issues. And individuals who run under party labels, right. they decide based on the platform that they believe mm -hmm. which party label they run under. We don't make partisan decisions. We make policy decisions. And as informed by members across the country. Some are Democrats, some not, are Libertarians, some right, are right. Republicans. You may not think that you're making, that your agenda is party neutral. All I can tell you is somebody who wants to solve problems. It's pretty odd to me that every Democrat gets 100 percent, and I do the best as a Republican getting 22. Maybe the problem's all on our side. I don't think so. Yeah, that's the damn problem. Press play. I think the agenda that you're pursuing in the eyes of conservatives is not as good for the country as you think it is. And it's got no Did he just say that y'all the agenda of y'all black people is not as good as it should be in the eyes of conservatives? That's why we don't vote for your asses because you vote against the interests of black people. Press play. Nothing to do about Republican and Democrat is more it has to do about liberal and conservative. You gotta ask yourself, why does every conservative on this committee the best I can do is to get 22. Mr. Chairman. Well, I think it's a different question. I think the members of the Republican Party should ask yourselves, are you willing to be expansive enough to, and inclusive That's to ensure question. the rights of individuals, despite their racial background, their interests are met, not based on conservative or liberal tendencies, but based on those individuals' needs and Fair the enough. interests that they advocate for. Will you ask for. yourselves why I can't get better than 22 percent from conservatives? Yeah, sure. We can go down each Fair one of enough. the policy agendas and we can go through each yeah. one of them and Mr. we can make Chairman, a determination. Let me, I want to sharp, yes, sharp, sharpen, sharpen this discussion because yeah. I think it's an important discussion. Okay, I'm going to go back to the report card. Here we go to my iPad. Since Lindsay, your ass wanted education on this whole deal, this is the report card. This is what it says. Voted in favor of NAACP position. Voted against NAACP position. Question mark. Did not vote. V seat was vacant. P voted present. S says Speaker of the House. When you go through this grading scale, A, B, C, D, E, uh, if you get an F, it's, 59, it's 0 to 59 percent. Okay, here's what it says. The NAACP identifies these very specific issues that they are concerned about. This is what it says. They, how did they vote? On Betsy DeVos, on Jefferson Jeff Beauregard Sessions for Attorney General, on Tom, which the NAACP opposed. They opposed Betsy DeVos. They opposed Tom Price. They supported the confirmation of the VA Secretary, David Shulkin, Mike Mulvaney for Office of Management and Budget. The NAACP opposed him. Scott Pruitt, they had the EPA. The NAACP opposed him, requiring federal contractors to comply with basic federal labor and non-discrimination discrimination laws. The NAACP opposed the legislation and urged a no vote, overturning regulations requiring public school accountability with historically marginalized groups. The NAACP opposed the legislation and urged a no vote, allowing states to require drug tests for people collecting unemployment insurance. The NAACP opposed the legislation and urged a no vote, requiring federal contractors to maintain accurate records of workplace illness, injury, or death. The NAACP opposed the legislation and urged a no vote. The confirmation of Neil Gorsuch, the NAACP opposed. Repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, opposed by the NAACP. Increase the budget authority for federal health programs. The NAACP supported that amendment and urged a yes vote. Emergency disaster appropriations that were supported by the NAACP. Allow, allowing forced arbitration by financial servicers. The NAACP opposed that. Allowing tax breaks for tuition to 
private and religious schools. That was opposed by the NAACP, assuring every American has health insurance. That was supportive. Uh, the NAACP supported the motion to instruct conferees and urge an A vote. Tax overhaul. That was opposed by the NAACP. Those were the issues that, that were very specific in the report card. Lindsey is mad because he got 22%. So we'll, we'll go down. Alabama Republican Richard Shelby, 6%. In Alaska, uh, Dan Sullivan got 11 Lisa Murkowski, Republican, 28%. When Lindsey Graham said 22%, he was speaking to the Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, John McCain, 17 Jeff Flake, 6 Tom Cotton, Republican, 11%. John Boozman, 11%. You go to Colorado, Republican, Cory Gardner, 11. If you go down to Marco Rubio, 11%. Go to Georgia, the two Republican senators, Johnny Isaacson, 11%. David Perdue, 6%. You go to Idaho, two Republican senators, both of them 6%. Go to Indiana, Repu Democrat Joe Donnelly, who lost 89%, Ty Young, 11 Iowa, two Republicans, 11. Go to Kansas, two Republicans, 17 and 11. Kentucky, two Republicans, 11%. Go to Louisiana, two Republicans, 17 and 11%. Go to Maine, Susan Collins, Republican, 33%. If you go down to uh, Mississippi, both Republicans, 11. Missouri, Roy Blunt, 11. Montana, Danes, 11. Ben Sass, 6. Go to Nevada, David Heller, 17. If you go to um, North Carolina, both of them, 11. North Dakota, 11. 17, 6, 6, 22, 11. Mind y'all, Lindsey Graham, Republican South Carolina, got 22%. Tim Scott, the only black Republican in, uh, in the United States Senate, and one of only two black Republicans in Congress, got 11%, which means Lindsey Graham voted better than a black Republican from South Carolina. Just pointing that thing out. North Carolina, 11. Rob Portman in Ohio, 17. Oklahoma, 6. Pennsylvania, 6. Uh, you can go down the line here. These are all of the numbers. They're based upon how they actually voted. And so, Lindsey Graham, if you want to improve your score with the NAACP, it's very simple. Stop voting against stuff the NAACP supports. It ain't that damn hard. Here's the fundamental problem for Republicans. And he said it. Well, we conservatives, we don't think these things are good. Okay, I'm going to go back to the issue so y'all understand what we're talking about. They don't think it's good for the issue of health care and the Affordable Care Act. And they still get to present an actual health care plan to replace the Affordable Care Act. They also, the same Congress that got rid of the Obama era discrimination laws when it came to folks uh, when it comes to going out and buying cars. They were like, let's make, make America great again. No, how about not discriminating against black folks when it comes to going and buying a car? Who actually got rid of that? Republicans in the House and the Senate signed into law by Trump. We can go down the line, and the reality is this here. The Republican Party opposes those very issues the NAACP stands for, and then when Lindsey Graham wants to sit there and Mr. High and Mighty, and I just don't understand what's going on. Historically, there was a time when Republicans supported the position of the NAACP. There was a time when the NAACP could go to Republican members of the Senate and the House and know that they were a strong vote for those very issues. But what happened? We do know that Barry Goldwater ran for president in 1964. He opposed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 when he ran for president and completely flipped the party and then what you had is you had republicans like uh, uh, uh you had uh, uh, like buck william buckley who was supportive of civil rights uh laws who then flipped uh and changed and the party then all totally shifted because of the book that barry goldwater released and that book was co-authored by the daddy of brent bozell who of course runs media research center and the group newsbusters a group that is all about so-called liberal bias in media why am i laying all this out for you 
<laughs> because Lindsey Graham wants to sit there and just go, I just don't understand how y'all just not giving us a good grade. And then Lindsey Graham actually said, how, what could we do to actually close this? What you can actually do is listen to black people and talk to black people and understand why black people are supporting of those very issues. Maybe what you can do is Lindsey Graham show the hell up to the NAACP convention and actually get an understanding of what's going on. I was there in San Antonio this year. I don't recall seeing a single Republican senator or House member. Maybe what you ought to do, Lindsey Graham, is actually drop by some NAACP Freedom Fund dinners in the state of South Carolina to understand. Maybe what you ought to do is go talk to the black people in your state who are NAACP members, and then you can understand what's going on. And then why are you at it? Maybe when you tell the other Republicans who are on your committee, they should also go talk to the black people who are with NAACP chapters in their states to understand why y'all getting 22 and 11 percent. This really ain't hard, Lindsey Graham, for you to understand why black people are, why, why, why the NAACP gives you failing grades. It is because you are voting against the interests of black people. You're using the power of your position voting against it. What you have to understand is if you're black in North Carolina, you sure as hell are angry with Tom Tillis and Barr who chose to ignore two black women who appointed to the federal bench by President Obama. They kept those black women off of that appeals court and yet the moment they had to put a racist, a voter suppression person on in the name of Thomas Farr, they supported his nomination and it was sunk because of those racist writings and then you try to understand, I don't understand how they got 11%. Maybe what you ought to do, Lindsey Graham, is go pick up some historical books on black Republicans to understand the time when Republicans actually gave a damn about civil rights and black people voted for Republicans and not Democrats. Lastly, you say, well, I don't understand how Democrats, how they all got 100%. It's simple, because they chose to vote the way the NAACP asked them to vote. It ain't that hard. This is why y'all ain't going to get black votes. This is why black folks are not going to support you because, damn, you're that clueless about the NAACP because you can't even read the preface of the very report card you were complaining about. Had you not skipped to the scores and read the preface like I did, and read the breakdown of the issues, then it wouldn't have been hard to figure out why y'all looking so clueless. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.